Welcome back to Let's Play Gran Turismo 2 Part 54. This is the second of the three parts where it's just going to be me because of what I mentioned in the last part with 53, 54, and 55 having all gone missing. And in part 54, we'll be doing the Mazda One Make Races. Now, originally I was going to plan, and I did this in the original part, I was going to use my uh, Mazda Speed RX-7 GTC that I had gotten way back in the LP to use for the uh, RX-7 race. But, I spotted this in the used car dealerships, the RX-7 Touring Kit A spec, which I really like, so I thought, let's just go with this. And, uh, because it's really open to all RX-7s, all I'm gonna do is just reduce the weight and put racing tires, That's and that's it. So let's just jump right in, and we're gonna get Rome Circuit Full as the first track, which is actually pretty nice to see, actually, I'll be... I, there's me repeating a couple words. And looks like it's mostly entirely a field of FDs. We got a... We do have one FC. It's actually a convertible RX-7, which is quite interesting. Because, yes, the FC was made a convertible. I've never seen one around here, though. I'm not sure if they were sold over here. Also, yet again, just like we were seeing with uh, Ha... Toyota, sorry. We're already getting right into the reverse... So, pretty much it's kind of just like where we left off, really. But yeah, always a, always particularly like the uh, the A Spec RX-7, so I thought I'd uh, pick this one up because it just it's such a unique, more of a unique car. It isn't really unique, because it sounds like that this car ha seems to have carried over the same engine note from GT1, whereas the uh, the, when the, the newer RX-7, the 98, the one that you can, or whatever, the one that you can buy in the uh, dealership, uh, I think has a more, ro a closer to a rotary sound. But, oh well. I'm not the one who, who did this game, so. And there it goes, smacking into a wall. That's perfect how you, how you do these things. Just smack it into a wall. Just trying to drive fast. No, nope, just smack into a wall. Oh, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. I just smack into a wall. Okay, I'm gonna stop that. <laughs> and then I do it again. Oh, jeez. But yeah. So there were actually two A Spec RX 7s I could have gotten. There was this white one that I went for, and then there was also another one in red. I personally thought the white actually looked really nice, so I went with the, the white one here. Nothing against the red one. The red one does look good, but, you know, I wanted the uh, white one, so. it kind I just feel it kind of makes it uh, pop out a little better than the red one does. So that's kind of what did me over. And the RX-7s are a little bit tuned, but we're only going to need to use this RX-7 for one race because there, uh, there actually is no uh, racing mod uh, version of this, even though a, a huge chunk of the RX-7s in the game can get the racing mod applied. I guess it's because there are some that can't is why there, uh, is why there isn't any. Interesting, to say the least, but hey, I'm not the one who makes the game again. Sorry, this is like, what? Uh, 17-year-old game by now? You honestly think PD we're gonna, are gonna go back in ancient hardware to fix things like this? Let alone any company? Yeah. Just kinda, this track's a little bit, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, a little bit more confusing to get the hang of to go around really fast when in reverse. Some tracks were pretty simple to do backwards, but this is not one of them. This track requires you to kind of memorize it a little bit, and sometimes just doing it the opposite way for, for, for some reason or another likes to throw me off pace, like I'm doing right now, where, where I'm again smacking into a wall. But, yeah, I get, but you know, I've barely ever driven this track backwards, m mostly because there's n never been any other race where I've had to drive it backwards. All the all the major events we've always been doing it forwards and so it's really only now where it's starting to turn into reverse reverse tracks but whatever so we win as expected being out a type r r7 the cabriolet the fc actually came in third and then the to touring x in fourth and then the two type rz's in the last in the last two positions interesting I was that the RZ was supposed to be like the little like more track oriented model maybe. I think I, but they but they were at the back of the field, so maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe they just didn't have very good drivers at it. Either case. 
Anyways. I don't want to have to give this card away, so I may actually hold on to it. Maybe. We'll see, though. <laughs> actually. But anyways, next up we have the Mazda Miata MX-5 S Special, which I got for the Miatas. I went with the went with the first gen because I really like the old first gens. I'm, I'm going to again strip it of it, strip it of its weight and put better tires. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of extra power. It's boost only up to 180, uh, 205, two, uh, 205 horsepower Miata seems pretty good. So for the Roadster Trophy, so let's go. And our first track is going. <laughs> well, look at that. We go from Rome full to Rome short. But I'll take it because it's technically a different variation. But it looks like this one we're doing forward, so. Kind of like that I found the S special because it's kind of like this, 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 this blue tint is a really, really good tint of blue. <laughs> Don't really see it on many of the other cars in this game and see there's a, a dark blue Miata over there. It doesn't look anywhere near as good to me as uh, this S special. And honestly. I Miata's mean, kind of like a back and forth love story with many people, including me to an extent when it comes to Gran Turismo games, because as we know, later Gran Turismo games got a little bit carried away with the Miatas and Skylines and whatnot. I mean, the Skylines was already kind of an issue when G when G with GT4. The Miatas weren't so much, because at least with that, you, you, sure, you had all the variations, but you didn't have the goddamn name variation for regions. GT5 and 6 started doing that, and I'm guessing the only reason it did it was so they can claim to have a bigger number, or I think la the latter, my latter idea, and probably more realistic cases, since the games had online, they just included them all in so that the coding can basically make it make make life easier for it by basically saying, okay, this is that. I personally don't think it's really too necessary. Or, I mean. But, you know. And the one thing I really think they should do, I don't think they will, Velocity will do this, but I really hope they do when it comes to Gran Turismo 7 on the uh, PS4, whenever that comes out, probably in 2025. Um, what, I would, what I would like to see them do when it comes to the uh, Gran Turismo 7, when it comes to stuff like Miatas and, and Skylines and Lancers and Impressas, all the variations of cars, I honestly think... Especially in the case of Miatas, they should just have a base model because it, most people know in Gran Turismo 6, the body style of the Miata, the original, was given a serious graphical overhaul, so it didn't look substandard. I mean, most of them don't have an interior, but you know they do have a premium out outside. And what they should have done, and what they should do for Gran Turismo 7, is they should take one me one kind of base mo looking model for the MX-5 because let's be honest they all look very similar just like minor cosmetic things and and honestly just combine all the trims and variations and all that into one one listing so when you go into a dealership you'll see Mazda Miata MX-5 in the original NA model here and that's it and then if you want to find like a specific trim or color you you, you have an option that says color, and then another option that says trim. Personally, that's how I think they should do it. Will they do it? I don't imagine they will, but... Would honestly, in my opinion, save a lot of clutter. Anyway, so we put the uh, racing mod on the S Special, and what I'm actually gonna do... Let's actually... Let's make this like a... Let's make this a little more racy. Let's put some more, more power in it. 267 is pretty good. Anyways... So let's see what we're going to be doing for track-wise for the racing well. Oh, special stage route 5. All right. Perfect. I c this would be pretty interesting. Let's see what we let's see. Again, you can actually notice um too similar to like the um Altezas and the some of the other ones from Toyota I'm trying to remember, but Celica's, you, you can notice that some of these MX-5s have different designs. The white and the blue stripes and the green and yellow are quite common for the older MX-5s, but there's a couple that have a red and white or blue and white stripe, which also look really good, but, you know. I don't exactly know which particular Miatas have that design or not, and I and I just want the S-Special, because, you know, I like I liked the blue. And even though the racing mod means I, that blue is no more, it still has some blue on it, so hey. Still a technicality. 
Yeah. Like I was mentioning earlier, I think with the trims and variations, if they just had it the one car and then they had like an option that says trim, and then, then you have like the listing for J Limited, S Special, V Special, Midnight Purple 700 or something. <laughs> I think that would definitely work a in a, lo a lot better because it would just clean it up. It would just get rid of all the trouble. All the, not the trouble, all the clutter and the mess that it leaves. And then when it comes to name just just all you gotta do is it just when you select the car just it'll it'll highlight it saying or mx5 miata or unos roadster and then just um when it comes to that just list them all and then they like you can select region ronald and that'll determine the name like you want it to say MX-5, you, you can choose MX-5. You want it to say Miata, you can have it. choose the one that says Miata. You want it to say Unos Roadster, you choose the one that says Unos Roadster. That's how easy it can... That's how easy they can make it. I mean, it would just save a lot of space and just make it, you know, a lot more tolerable to look at. But, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see what Pilafity does when the eventual day GT7 does come out. And do I think it'll come out in 2025? No. It'll probably come out, obviously come out a lot sooner than that, especially because this time around the PlayStation 4 is a lot easier to develop for rather than the PlayStation 3. But it's because Polyphony is so quiet is all is so quiet with everything, which really bugs me because there's so many kind of like things we could do we, that people have been mentioning that they've been suggesting that can help improve their games. Polyphony remains so quiet and somewhat secretive with everything that we can't really tell what they're gonna do and that gets really infuriating in fact when i remember on the gt planet forums like last year or something they were they opened up a topic thing like ask has and it, it was meant to be like you'd ask like questions about the game or suggestions improvements and kaz would give an answer to them and it never went anywhere there was never any direct answers or nothing it was just nothing came out of it and as such that section has been closed off now because it didn't it didn't work it didn't take off and it really should have and that's honestly what people at Pilafni need to start doing if they don't start doing that then people will start to wonder what can will start to always wonder what can we expect because it's pretty much remains up in the air when it comes to stuff like Forza you kind of get the idea of what they're going to do and there are suggestions mentioned, and they do answer them, like rain, bringing back nighttime racing and wet weather conditions was some, a huge request for Forza 6, and that's what exactly what they did. It's, I mean, it took them a while to do it, but they did in fact do it. If, now, Polyphony already has those kind of stuff, but what else can they do? There's many things they could possibly do, but... At the end of the day, we just don't exactly know where they're going to go with it. Anyways. The next Mazda seri series is actually going to be for Demios. And because I had w won a Demio A spec earlier on in the LP, I'm just going to get out my uh, Demio A spec. And oh my god, I that just caught my attention. That's a lot of extra power you can get out of this thing. Jesus. A 270 horsepower Demio. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> That's that that is crazy. And let's just start. Yep. Okay. Just had to make sure for one little thing. And Demi Race. Let's go. In fact, you can see there it, it, it's in the little picture that shows the um, A spec. In fact, and again we're doing it like we were. Like we start with Rome Circuit. We we go to Rome. Short. What the hell is with this sound? Oh my God. Kind of glad I'm showing this out because this is what. On Earth is this sound? Is this some kind of like future spaceship or something? Just, just like a really high-pitched whine. What on Earth is this? Oh my God. Not quite sure what they were thinking of when it came to this. I wasn't expecting that either. I didn't actually use this this uh, demo originally because I I'd completely forgotten in in, when, in the original Part 54 that. I already had this, but since I remember this time around, I thought I'd bring it out, and I was not expecting it to sound like a spaceship or something else. Just what the hell is this sound? 
Yeah. I gotten so distracted by it that I've lost, I almost kind of lost my train of thought, but... Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. We start with, like, Rome's full, then we go to Rome short, and then so and then special stage route five, and now we're at Clubman stage route five. It's like kind of working backwards. Like we start with the longer tracks and then go to the shorter tracks. It's a little little weird, but I'll take it. Why? Well, just I'm just this, this this the way this thing has such a high pitch sound though is just really distracting. It's the it's the obnoxious Demino, and I say Demino because Weirdo will probably get that because I I remember. I remember the day you said Demino. Don't think I've forgotten. That is if he's even watching this. I don't really know if he watches my content. But he should, because I told him to. <laughs> Anyways. It doesn't really matter. It just it's just kinda funny to have a car that just sounds like this. Honestly, like this just it just caught me off by surprise. I, I'm not gonna beat around the bush about it. It's just something I just personally didn't expect, but hey. What can you do, I guess? Anyways. So there's that one down, and that's just, you know, your typical three grand. That doesn't really matter too much because I have, like, tons of money. Alright, and now it's time to give this thing its, uh, colors. We can go with the white and red or the white and blue. I, just, I believe, I think these are somewhat carryovers from uh, GT1. I think they're, I do think they look somewhat a little bit different though. I can't remember though to be, to save my life. But anyways, let's see what we're going to be doing for the racing mod track. Oh, we're already here, so we don't need to go. I'd rather not come back to this. So, let's see. Maybe we'll get something better. Ooh, Laguna Seca with Demios. This should be pretty interesting. <laughs> now, I know that for a fact this is going to be Ford because there is no re this track is not actually driven in reverse in real life. And it's also the interesting case of the fact that there actually was going to be a reverse Laguna Seca in this game when the game was being made, but it got cut out and I'm guessing and I'm guessing the the reason for it was just simply because the fact that there, in real life there's just no reverse for this track is never driven in reverse, it's only driven in forwards. I guess they th they were making and they thought, eh, we'll just... Let's, we don't really need this reverse version because the track's not driven in reverse. And such, and as such it got uh, axed out. I think there was also going to be a reverse super speedway. But again, it was also axed out. This is a whole bunch of stuff that was, you know, axed out of this game. That Gran Turismo 2 could have had to make it bigger, but, you know, time constraints and other things were uh, the reason why it didn't make it. One of the, now, of course, a lot of people do remember that drag racing was going to be originally supposed to be a thing in Gran Turismo 2. The problem was, it was I think Polophony tended to focus it as one of the later things in the game's life cycle. And once it was coming closer to the deadline, they realized that they were just not going to be able to get the drag racing mode available to... Uh, to its release date and such never gotten only has like a, str a couple strings of text or something and has like a picture w of what the mode would have potentially looked like if you were selecting it in arcade mode and then of course the drag 180sx drag r33 gtr and the chrysler intrepid uh, race mod that looks quite like a funny car and it's often widely believed that that was the reason that in the original Gran Turismo 2, that 98.2% was the highest you can go, and it was a lot of people believed it was because of the drag race mode being removed. I believe it was either likely just an error, though I have heard some people say that it is possible to get 100% on the original. You just have to do the event synthesizer. I don't, I don't know for sure. I have never personally tested with my original copy. I mean, it is perfectly possible, but I wouldn't know for sure. And you're not going to notice it any other ways with this particular LP, because this is the 1.02 version of Gran Turismo 2, which by this point had it actually fixed so that, so that like, as far as most people know, so that it'll say 100%. But when it comes to 98.2% or whatever, 
that's usually considered by mo most people of Grand Turismo 2 to be the actual 100% simply because the, the, the either because of the drag race uh, content being cut because of time constraints or just simply because they they done goofed. Either one could work honestly, to be honest. But yeah, that was one of the. Uh, so most people know, of course, that drag racing was supposed to be a thing, but it wasn't. Another thing that was supposed to be in this game that was that was actually kind of being worked on, but again was cut out, was not only cut out, but I think cut out kind of earlier in the game's life cycle. Originally, there was the plans. This Laguna Seca was not going to be the only uh, demo, <laughs> the only real life track in um, GT2. Because I said one race, by the way, is the last race. Because when people were going through the demos and were finding ways to change the code to um, go to different tracks, they realized that there was a very, very, a very sketchy because it was not, it wasn't made very much because early development. But there was originally plans to have Monaco, oh, in um, GT2. Now, Monaco would eventually do make its appearance in Gran Turismo. In fact, it would be in the very next Gran Turismo, Gran Turismo 3. But it seems to be that they had a, had the track in mind as early as GT2. And, um... I'd rather not do Autumn Ring. Autumn Ring's just kind of bleh to me. I know, I know, it keeps giving me Autumn Ring. Ooh, high speed ring. Okay, I'll take this. But yeah. Base, but yeah, but just at some... But they were considering it, and it but it just never really got anywhere. And I'm guessing that my only reason, my only guess is uh, is possibly just the fact that maybe they were unable to secure the license at the time to use the track, or excuse me, or it just time constraints again forced it to be pulled. There was also another speedway track in the earlier builds of Gran Turismo 2 that, uh, that curious, curiously enough, spells I N D I, which would, which would make you believe Indianapolis, which didn't make its appearance until Gran Turismo 5. But the track layout did look quite a, it, it, it did, it did kind of have the Indianapolis layout, but it did look quite a bit different. Which makes me believe that maybe there it was just going to be its own special like speedway track at first, but again, never made it. I'm sure there's like a couple other tracks, but right now my mind escapes me to what those ones are. Yeah, and of course one other thing that was uh, not not so necessarily cut out. It wasn't cut out, but couldn't was unable to happen was you you probably have been noticing that a lot of the cars in this game race car wise a lot of them were from the 1999 Japanese Grand Touring Championship season the original plan for GT2 was they were going to have and strings of text can, can actually are able to confirm this they were planning to originally to have every single car from the 1999 Japanese Grand Touring Championship season in this game and for good and a very, very, very large portion of them did end up getting into the game. But not all of them. Because there was a McLaren F1 GTR that raced that year. There was a Lamborghini Countach and the Lab. The Lab? What the fuck? Kunt yeah, Countach and the Lab. I'm doing it again. And Diablo. Thank you. And I think there's also some kind of Ferrari. I can't remember for sure. But there were going to be other cars in there that were part of that year's uh, JGTC, but licensing reasons prevented uh, Polyphony from being able to do so. They, they tried to find a way around it in GT3 with the uh, Nomad Diablo being in the Japanese version of the game, but it was, it was removed from accessibility in the North American version, but can be accessed with uh, Game Shark or Action Replay, and upon the PAL release was just removed altogether. And, it, and I think it's only because they're either they got into hot water with the licensing reason or they just wanted to avoid uh, problems. The Nomad Diablo would make its uh, full appearance by GT5 though, simply because, well, Lamborghini, they had licensed these Lamborghinis by then. 
And before I uh, end it off here, there is one other well-known car that was um, cut. One of the earliest pictures of Gran Turismo 2 showed a Mercedes CLK GTR race car, racing car. Basically, you know, one a, which was a very, very successful Mercedes racing car from 1997. So the earliest pictures showed of the game that were ever released onto the internet in 1999 showed the car, and it was, I guess, it was expected to be a car that you'd be able to drive. But it was taken out so early in development that there's so far no known builds of Gran Turismo 2 demo or something special that have been able to track the, the, the case of the car. So it'll probably forever remain a mystery. Anyways, that's going to do it for part 54. And in part 55, we'll be tackling... Nissan for these series of races. So stay tuned for that, and as always, thank you for watching, and take care.